Hey guys, and welcome back to Economics and Comics. We're in our stage two, session two, episode two at the uh, Massey Collection. They are some major film critics. Their website is... GoneWithTheTwins.com. You Got, guys... Gotta capitalize on the fact that we're twins. Yeah, I, we're, you're going to see them later, trust me. They're <laughs> hiding right now, but we're going to do some videos and you're going to see. But really, go check out their stuff. It's really fun. And even if you want to just like, oh, why did you give it that... Of one out of five, whatever, go look. Because they have done, they have a massive catalog of stuff that they've we, done. We are harsh critics. They're, yeah, let me put it this way. They're not going to, It's most of the time you're going to be like, gosh, why? <laughs> but you know what, they, they they really do their job well. They. Um, this is why we're not in front of the camera right now, because this is more photogenic than we are. <laughs> yeah, no, well, we'll see. But they, um, they, you know, I get why the way they uh, give their... Uh, critiques and whatever. They're very good at it. Check them out again. GoneWithTheTwins.com. We're going to go ahead and get started on the their Aliens collection. There's a massive amount, but we're going to do these three. Uh, what are these? Quarter scales? Yeah, so this these are nice companion pieces. Uh, they're actually the two on the ends. This, this one is Big Chap from Alien from 1979. And this is, uh, once again, modeled directly after the, uh, the original mask and prop and, and prosthetics and everything that was used on the set. Uh, and it is one, one fourth yeah, scale. Yeah, and this, this is one fourth scale. Yeah, so it's uh, four times larger and you'd have a, a life size head. Uh, but that's, so that's from the first movie. And then the, the one on the end is uh, the Alien Warrior from James Cameron's film Aliens. And this is also a one fourth scale. It appears a little bit smaller because for people who know uh, James Cameron, when he, when he uh, made the film, he wanted more aliens. And uh, it was too uh, cost prohibitive to make too many of them. So they had to make them a little bit smaller. So, so this, cut down on the this, oh, so the aliens are smaller in the movie. Yes, yes. So this is a true quarter scale. This is true quarter scale, yes. So, yeah, I can definitely see a difference already. And, of course, uh, well, let's get to that. Let's talk a little bit more about this first, and then we'll talk about Actually, you know, the now, bad boy now, in the now, room. Now that I think about it, I, I want to see these are larger than quarter scale. Were these third scale? Because I know the alien queen was fourth scale. So I'm thinking these these got to be half scale or third scale. Oh, then yeah, maybe. Pro probably should have done my research yeah. a little bit better. Yeah, so the queen in the middle is definitely one fourth scale. That was okay. We're not that going was there. the advertisement. Yeah, that's a tease. Yeah. So, but the uh, yeah, so the ones on the ends are are either half scale or third scale. So these um, that's, I like how the, you know it's very liquidy. Yes. Uh, again, so these are released by Sideshow, and they do. Uh, tremendous jobs on their on their busts and their figures and again this is a you know hand painted and the paints they use are, are spectacular and you really get to see that kind of shiny glossy the the humidity that was always in those films uh you know the aliens are constantly drooling and you can actually kind of see some of that going on with those the paint you can see like the you know a yeah, lot so of people they, don't they, know um, they did the they skull. matched yeah they matched the paints too from the film so in the original film the uh when Ridley Scott was uh, was helping with the designs of it, it was H.R. Giger was the one who created the designs. But as they were doing it, uh, Ridley Scott originally wanted the alien to be translucent. He wanted it to be kind of a clear body uh, to make it creepy or something. But as they were doing lighting tests, the uh, the lighting was just th all thrown off. You, you couldn't have a clear monster. So then they decided to just spray paint the whole thing black. So as a result, uh, the top of the head they spray painted a little bit less so that it's a little bit translucent. So you can kind of see that skull shape that was going on in there. Had they done the original design, you wouldn't have seen that dome on the top of his head at all. It would have just been this very, you know, monstrous skull shape. It's so weird to me, though, because it looks like a human skull. Yes, yeah, you can see eye sockets in the back. I just don't understand. And in the context of the film, as you're watching the film, you'll never see that because the lighting is dark. You know, they show the monster in, in very brief glimpses. Yeah. So you, there's there's never this close-up, you know. But it's there. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMille. There's none of that, so you're never going to see all of those details in the film. But it is there, though. But it is there, yeah. So it's just there. in case you guys didn't know, there's like a human skull inside there. Yeah. At least it looks like it. If um, a human skull was banana-shaped. Yeah. Well, long elongated, <laughs> but the front end, I mean, it does look like eye sockets. It, you know, I don't know. Yeah, and that was one of the alterations that James Cameron did when they started doing Aliens, is he got rid of the clear dome, and his his design was a little bit more insect-like, but you can see that there are eye sockets in this thing, too, so... Where? What, so you, you see see the little... Uh, oh, that? Yeah. Okay. So that's that's kind of the evolution of how his design changed. It, it does look like there's a spot where eyeballs would have gone. Uh, as a fun fact, or maybe not so fun fact, the... Uh, 
uh, strips along the, the, the tendons. On yeah, its the mouth. tendons on its on its mouth were actually made by made from shredded condoms. Yeah. Are you serious? To get, yeah. to get that kind of stretchy, gooey. So look. if I touch it. Well, these are made out of uh, polystone. <laughs> polystone. I'll be protected. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, but in the movie. Yeah, in, in the, the movie, movie there. Yeah, in the movie. So when he's like, ah, and it's all those are just condoms. Yep. yep. Gross. <laughs> anyway, yeah. you know what's funny is in person I'm looking at it right, and it's dark black, but on my camera it seems to be picking up more light reflection. But I think it actually looks like what the camera's showing. Yeah. So uh, in the second film, in Aliens, uh, they actually those the the painting that they did for or the colors that they used were in fact uh, like a brownish grayish. It, it was kind of a fleshy color, kind of like what you'd see in Alien Three. But uh, when they did the lighting on the set, they cast blue hues all over the place. So oh, in so the context of the it. film, yeah, when you're Darker. watching the film, the, the, the aliens look like they're probably bluish. But th their skin wasn't actually blue. That's just the lighting. And, and so Sideshow, when they made this bust, this one is painted a little bit more like the way it would have looked in the finished pr product of the film, not the, the Stan Winston Studios, uh, the, what, what that, that original prosthetics and the, the head shape and everything would have probably been like a tannish color see this is why you guys watch our review on the statues because these guys know absolutely everything that has to do with the movies that's why they are they do what they do and they're well these movies in particular these ones oh well are, they are well they're they have, it's the love a, of their life love of these, these i ones. think we all love them i think you guys love them a little no i don't know who loves them better i think you do you have more stuff <laughs> But I, I'm going for Predator on me. You can't beat me on that one. But uh, yeah. so anyway, this piece, uh, how heavy is that piece? That's probably a good uh, is it, eight or nine we, pounds probably. Oh, yeah. do you, would you mind if we took it and put it in the on so I could go all the way around it? Yeah, you yeah. can pick it up. All right, we're uh, going to be right we back. It. We, we moved it uh, so we could get a good 360 view on it. Um, it's yeah, probably it has a, a solid 20, 25, 30 pounds. Yeah, it's, it's a lot heavier than I remember. <laughs> Um, all right, well, so tell me about it. So this one was, again, a, a sideshow bust. And one of the interesting things is the name plaque. Uh, when this came out, this would have probably been, what, 2005, somewhere around there, 2006 maybe. They actually called it the Queen Alien. But as a lot of fans know, it's now kind of been renamed the Alien Queen. So at this time when they made this, there was kind of contention as to what the proper name of it is. But we all know that it's the Alien Queen and not the Queen Alien. But uh, yeah, so this one um, is a one fourth scale, and again, it's uh, they used uh, actual, I think it was plaster casts of the the puppet. This was a, I think it was an eighteen foot animatronic puppet at the time in eighty. It was, was the largest, it was the largest animatronic, animatronic ever built thing ever built for a film. Yeah. I'd be, I'd be so worried about this thing just one little piece breaking off. Well, the, uh, the back spikes and the head are removable. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. in the box they that came full head off. Yeah. Oh, okay. But uh, it has a nice solid base, so it, it would be kind of unwieldy if, if it weren't for that base. The base is really solid. So it's, she's got the the hands in the front. She's got the hands. Oh, is that yeah, the interesting piece? thing about this one is that it's more than just a bust. It's yeah, actually, it's, uh, the entire upper half of its body. Yeah, kind of like more. Yeah, more of a true bust, really. Well, I guess what is it? The shoulders, shoulders up, is the shoulders bust? up. Yeah, so. Bust? yeah. So this is a little bit more than that. But uh, it's a really, really nice looking. Yeah, piece. it's so awesome. And it's dramatic because of this pose. You kind of get, you know, this is the, the enraged queen. So you get yeah, her coming screaming. After you. Yeah, and she's got her arms flailing. And and this pose is actually seen in the film. So again, it's a it's a really, really nice piece for fans of the film. This is also the hardest piece to acquire. Okay. Yeah, it's one of the older ones, uh, earlier days of sideshow. Uh, they have done other versions of the Queen. I think there's one that just recently came out, and it was a, a design based on the Queen from Alien vs. Predator. But as we all know, that is an inferior film. And <laughs> why would you want that when you could have this one? So. so here's the back end. You can see like her little spikes, or her backbone or whatever coming out. These little, like, Ooh, that just fits on? Yeah, they, they, yeah. they're... Okay, because they, I they moved. Yeah. I'm like, oh my God. You know, so interestingly, uh, the regular uh, aliens, they have those four tube spike things that That's come out right. the back. Yeah. The, uh, that was never part of H.R. Uh, Geeger's original design for, for Alien in 1979. What they did is they found that the guy in the suit couldn't balance himself well. 
So they decided to add those four back spikes just so that he was more proportionately, his weight was better distributed so that he could stand up and crouch and everything in the suit. So, and then that became a staple of the design so that when they made the Alien Queen, she also has these, these enormous back spikes and they of course have to one-up themselves so they became larger and more elaborate. Than that is a, see, I would have never known that. And I don't think anyone watching knew that. So <laughs> uh, I think that's, uh, that's incredible, great. Uh, I never do that. That makes so much sense now, though. Yeah, and what's interesting is that it's kind of a cool design anyway because it's a little bit more uh, non-humanoid. So, you know, H.R. Giger's designs are just... Well, just uh, if I'm not mistaken, H.R. Giger designed the original Alien, but James Cameron he designed the Queen. Design yeah, alien. yeah, yeah. Uh, this was originally based on a sketch that he did uh, in post uh, pre-production. And, uh, yeah, it, uh, so... Not even Stan Winston Studios, it was James Cameron himself was the one who kind of came up with the elaborations on this design to make it the, uh, the bigger, better version of the standard alien. And again, uh, this, this paint is, is yeah, just, right. just, just phenomenal. You can see, the, you know, you can see some of the, the salivation going on in its mouth and, and there's like a moistness to it that uh, you, you don't see too often in statues. And Sideshow is kind of the, uh, the leading company to do these really Really magnificent looking bust. All right, guys. Well, I love this piece. Uh, we'll have more stuff. Make sure to check out their site online at godwiththetwins.com. Very good site. And uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. We'll be back.